Hey everyone, I'm Mr. A, and today I want to talk to you about proving that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So there's a difference between property and proof, and if we want to prove that something is a parallelogram, there are actually five ways for us to do this. So here are the five ways to prove a quad is in fact a parallelogram. One thing you can do is prove that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Another thing you can do is prove that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Now that one shouldn't be a surprise because that's the definition of a parallelogram. You could also prove that one pair of opposite sides is congruent and parallel, or both pairs of opposite angles congruent, or that the diagonals bisect each other. Depending on the type of proof you're doing, some of these turn up more than others. So these first three are generally the three that you're going to use if you're doing a two-column or formal proof. Right? So if you're doing like a formal proof here, and you're not working with coordinates, then you're likely going to be doing one of these three. The, yeah, this last one is my favorite, actually, and then you know par parallel or congruent works great, too. So if you can get both pairs of opposite sides parallel, it's a parallelogram. Get both pairs of opposite sides congruent, it's a parallelogram. Get one pair. Notice this is just one pair. That is both of those things, right? Congruent and parallel and you've also got yourself a parallelogram. Now I may make a video to show you why these all work another time, but this video I'm just going to show you how to use them and a couple of different proofs we'll go through. So knowing why these work is important, it's a great exercise for you to try on your own. Try to figure out why this is enough to prove a parallelogram. Why is this enough? Why is this enough? But for this video we'll take these as they are and simply jump into some proofs. So here's the first proof we're going to look at, and you can pause the video, copy this down so you can work along with me, or download the PDF in the comments. Let's go ahead and start by marking up our picture. They tell us that angle D is congruent to angle 1. And before I even go any further, I think to myself, hmm, that's a pair of corresponding angles. Can you see that they're corresponding? They actually correspond to these two lines, CD and HM. And if those angles are congruent, that's going to tell me that CD is parallel to HM. So that's already really nice. I found something that will get me a pair of parallel lines. So I'm sort of halfway to proving that that shape is a parallelogram already. They also tell me that angle 1 is congruent to angle E. So angle 1 is congruent to angle E. And right away there, I stop again because I notice that they just gave me two angles of a triangle that are congruent, right? So if I have a triangle with two congruent angles, then that tells me that the sides opposite those angles are also congruent. In other words, they're telling me that MH is congruent to HE. Hopefully you can see that as well. So I'm going to go over here, I'm just going to draw a little arrow, because that's going to give me MH congruent to HE. Finally, CD congruent to HE. Well, CD is over here, right, that side, and then HE is over there, that side. Ah, so look what just happened. I already knew that these two were congruent, now they're telling me that this one is congruent to this one. Can you see what to do there? We could do a little substitution and get CD congruent to MH. Okay, so what's going to happen here? By unpacking all of these givens, and here I'm going to do a little substitution. I'll write sub, right, to get uh, CD congruent to HM. And you can see it right there. Once I do that, I'll have CD and HM both be parallel to each other and be congruent to each other, which means we'll have one pair of opposite sides, parallel and congruent, which is that first, excuse me, that third way to prove a parallelogram from that list before. So let's go ahead and actually write the proof up. Let's see, where should we start? Well, it doesn't really matter. Maybe I'll just go in order. Angle D is congruent to angle 1. What the heck did I just write? <laughs> okay, so angle D is congruent to angle 1 that was given. And that's going to allow me to say that these two lines, CD and MH, are parallel. So CD is parallel to MH. And how do I know that's true? Well, if I have two lines cut by a transversal that form congruent alternate, excuse me, those are not alternate interior angles. What kind of angles are D and 1? I think I said it earlier, those are corresponding. So two lines cut by a transversal that form congruent corresponding angles are parallel. So I've got a pair of parallel lines already in my quadrilateral. Next I'm going to take this one congruent to E, angle 1 congruent to angle E. Okay, and that was given as well. 
And what does that let me say about the picture? Well, if 1 and E are congruent, then MH is going to have to be congruent to HE. So MH is congruent to HE. My reason? In a triangle. Don't forget about in a triangle, because it's only true in a triangle that the sides opposite congruent angles are congruent. So I have MH congruent to HE, and they told me in that other given that CD was congruent to HE as well. So if you didn't see it before, hopefully you see it now. If CD is congruent to HE and MH is congruent to HE, then I can do a little substitution there, right? If these are both congruent to HE, then CD must be congruent to MH as well. So I get that with a little substitution on these two steps, 4 and 5. And at that point, I'm going to say that is enough for me to say that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Why? I've got a pair of opposite sides, both congruent and parallel. So that's all I need. CHMD is a parallelogram. I'm going to get to say it right now in step 7. CHMD is a parallelogram. I never write the word parallelogram out. I just draw a little picture. It's a really long word and it's hard to spell. What's my reason going to be? Now, I'm not going to say opposite sides congruent and parallel. That's not a complete sentence, nor is it a complete reason. I'm going to say a quadrilateral, because that's what this was beforehand, right? I'm trying to say it's a parallelogram. I know it's a quadrilateral. So a quadrilateral with one pair opposite sides congruent and parallel right so I got one pair of sides that is both of these things is a excuse me is a parallelogram right so is a parallelogram again I'll just draw the picture for a parallelogram so there's my first proof let me just we'll take a look at the whole thing there okay so we started off with this quadrilateral that we wanted to get to be a parallelogram a pair of corresponding angles here gave us the parallel lines by using this triangle and the two congruent angles we got a pair of congruent sides that let us do a substitution to get these two pairs of sides congruent. Now we've got a quadrilateral that has a pair of sides that is parallel and the same pair of sides is also congruent. And that's it. That's all I need to do to prove that CHMD is in fact a parallelogram. So let's take a look at another one here. Uh, we'll jump to this one. So here's again another proof. You can pause the video and give yourself a minute to draw the picture so you can work along with me. They're telling us that this large quadrilateral is a parallelogram, right? PQRS is a parallelogram. So they're giving me six things, right? I get all six properties of a parallelogram to play with. They're also telling me that TR is congruent to PV. So let's start there. TR is congruent to PV. They want me to prove that this little quadrilateral is also a parallelogram. All right, so how am I going to do that? Well, there's a couple of different tactics I could take. So the first thing I notice is that if the big shape is a parallelogram, then it's got all the properties of a parallelogram. In particular, that means that SR is parallel to PQ, right? Has to be. So I might start there because that's going to help me prove that ST is parallel to VQ, right? So if I say PQRS is a parallelogram, that was my given, right? Then I could say, all right, well, then that certainly means that SR is parallel to PQ because in a parallelogram opposite sides are parallel. But I don't really want SR parallel to PQ. What I really need is something about ST and VQ, right? Well, just think about it. If SR is parallel to PQ, then don't ST and VQ also have to be parallel? I mean, they're just parts of the same lines. They have the same slope. They go in the same direction. So that's got to be true. So I'm going to, in the next step, go ahead and say ST is parallel to VQ. And what's my reason going to be? Well, I'm just going to explain what's happening here. I've got two lines that are parallel, so certainly any parts of those lines are parallel. So maybe I'll write it out like that. If two lines are parallel, if two lines are parallel, any segments or any parts of those lines are also parallel. 
Right, that should make sense, right? If this line is parallel to this one, then ST must be parallel to VQ. Let me go ahead and mark that because that's a pair of sides that are parallel in my parallelogram or in my wannabe parallelogram, right? I'm trying to get that to be a parallelogram. So at this point, I've got two options. I can either prove that SV is parallel to TQ or I could prove that ST is congruent to VQ, right? I could go for both pairs of opposite sides parallel or I could go for one pair of opposite sides that is parallel and congruent. So let me think about what I also know. I've got this other given here about PV being congruent to TR. So I feel like that's pushing me in the direction of doing maybe a subtraction here. Because since this is a parallelogram, the large shape that is, don't we know that this entire side, sorry that was a little sloppy, don't we know that this entire side is congruent to this entire side up here, right? That's got to be true. So if I take away the two tick sides from the bigger three tick pieces, won't I end up with ST congruent to VQ? And then I'd be done. So I'm sort of being pulled in that direction. How else maybe could I do this? Well, since it is a parallelogram, the large shape, I know that the opposite sides are congruent, excuse me, the opposite angles are congruent. So like angle P and angle R are congruent. Um, is there anything else I can do? Well, I've also got RQ and PS are congruent because they're opposite sides. So if I wanted to, right, I could maybe go this direction. I can get this and this, and that would give me side angle side on these two triangles here. So I still would need to make some sort of argument about these being parallel. And I don't see an easy way to do that because I would need like corresponding angles congruent. I'm not sure how to connect those two. Or uh, supplementary, same side interior supplementary. Mm. No obvious way for me to get that. I could use the triangles to get SV congruent to TQ, but that's going to give me one pair of opposite sides that are parallel and a different pair of opposite sides that are congruent, and that just doesn't work. So I think we're going to scrap those triangles and simply focus on the subtraction here. Using the original parallelogram, we can see that the opposite sides are congruent, and if I take away the other given, that'll give me the pair of sides that I need congruent. So let's go ahead and jump into that subtraction. The first thing I'm going to need to, do, need to do is establish those large pieces. So SR is congruent to PQ. And how do I know that? Because in a parallelogram, opposite sides congruent. Right? And then if I want to do subtraction with those, I'm going to need to break them up. So SR is congruent to ST plus TR. And PQ is congruent to PV plus VQ. I would normally do this in two lines, but just to save space on the screen here, I'm putting it all in one line there with a comma. And that is, of course, a partition step. Now, why did I do that partition? So that I could take these large pieces and substitute. So now in step six, I get to say ST plus TR, right? ST plus TR is congruent to PV plus VQ. PV plus VQ. That is a substitution with steps 4 and 5, right? I'm taking the SR and replacing it with ST plus TR, and the PQ and replacing it with PV plus VQ. So that's substitution on 4 and 5. Now I'm going to bring that other given into the mix. Whoops, sorry about that. I'm going to bring that other given into the mix. They told me that TR is congruent to PV. So I can come down here in step seven, and if I know that TR is congruent to PV, and I do, then I can go ahead and do some subtraction, right? Take away TR, take away PV, what am I left with? ST congruent to VQ. That is subtraction. Sorry about that, subtraction with steps six and seven. And now I've got ST parallel to VQ up here. I've got ST congruent to VQ up here. So back to my picture, I've got a pair of sides that are both parallel and are also, let's see, I got congruent, one tick, right? So these two sides are parallel and congruent. That's all I need to get VQTS to be a parallelogram. So back down here in step nine, I can go ahead and say VQTS is a parallelogram and what's my reason going to be? Well, it's same as before, a quadrilateral with one pair of opposite sides 
congruent and parallel, right? Both, whoops, congruent, it's hard to talk and write at the same time. Congruent and parallel is a parallelogram. Notice I'm setting the stage here, right? I'm, I'm talking about what I have first, a quadrilateral with one pair of opposite sides, congruent and parallel. That's what I proved. Here's the congruent, here's the parallel. And by getting that pair of sides, congruent and parallel, I can be certain that what I'm dealing with is a parallelogram. So there's our second parallelogram proof, right? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, feel free to leave a comment below, and as always, have a great day.